my name is Emily and welcome. This is 108 Stitches, which is a mostly knitting video podcast. Sometimes I'll chat about other stuff, including baseball at times, although I feel like I haven't been super chatty about baseball recently. So if you are just here for the knitting, then that's great because that's most of what I will be chatting about today. Um, this is it's September 18th. And it is episode 27, I believe, which, oh boy, I cannot believe that it has been 27 episodes. Um, I feel like every time I make a new episode, I can't believe that uh, I've made that many. But um, yeah, it, just earlier this month was the anniversary of when I started this podcast, the first anniversary. Um, and I just can't thank you all enough for continuing to come back, or if you're new and you're just checking it out for the first time, thank you so much. I am so happy that you're here. So yeah, uh, I think it'll probably be a relatively short one today. Uh, I think my last couple have been a little bit lengthy, so I'm hoping to just kind of give you all a quick update on what I've been knitting. I know it's been a couple weeks, we've been traveling, and um, I just had a lot going on. Work has been really busy, and so I haven't had a good opportunity to record a video. Norman is off to the side here trying to get nestled underneath his blanket. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name, again, my name is Emily um, and I live in Seattle, Washington with my husband Malthus and our pup Norman, um, who is a unique little guy who loves to sleep completely covered up by a blanket. So he is working on covering himself up right now so that he can take a little nap. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll just go ahead and start by sharing with you uh, what I've been up to, what what my knitting has been like the last couple weeks. And some of you may have um, seen on my Instagram that we went last weekend on a trip to uh, North Cascades National Park, had a great time. Um, actually, uh, randomly ran into Hoki Locatelli on that trip as well. So I'll go through kind of sharing details of the trip, maybe some photos and stuff later, but um, I'm going to do the knitting stuff first. And then if you want to stick around and listen to how our trip was last weekend, please feel free to do so. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start with finished objects. So I have one finished object this week and it's actually blocking right now and it's pretty wet and I did not plan <laughs> appropriately for it to be dry. I started blocking it last night. Um, and it is actually, we're definitely getting fall vibes um, in Washington now. I think last weekend really felt kind of like the turn. Um, and so it started to be a little more cloudy and rainy and cool here, which honestly, you know, I don't love the rain, but I I am kind of feeling fall. Like I'm I'm okay with that. But yeah, I am, I'm definitely feeling fall. I'm wearing a lot more of this like, you know, fall colors, orange and, and all of that. Um, but anyway, the point I was trying to make about that is that in the fall, my knits take much longer to block. It takes a lot longer for things to dry. So like in the summer, I'd lay something out and if I even put it outside in the sun, it'd be done in like an hour. But I think it's gonna take a little bit longer for this stuff to block out. But I will still hold it up for you. So let me just go grab it. I finished my Woodwardia sweater and it is wet <laughs> so you can see it's kind of hanging here but I did finish it. Uh, I wove in the ends but I haven't trimmed them yet. I'm gonna wait until it finishes blocking but I finished my Woodwardia sweater. So I had started this. I had just kind of started it before last episode which was I think three weeks ago and then I finished this on our trip last weekend so I've had this finished for about a week now. Um, this is a pattern by Lydia Gluck and I actually got it from the Pom Pom Ready Set Raglan book. I'm going to hold this up and then I'm going to, I mean I can't try it on for you, it's too wet right now, but I'm going to put it back down. So yeah, this is it. It's a, well maybe I'll point out some of the details first before I put it back. It's a raglan with this really cool detailing on this down the raglan. You can see that maybe. Um, has these cool like pearls that make uh, what they call like a fern detail. And if you know anything about me, you know I love ferns. So um, I was completely sold on that. And then it has, I mean, you could do, they had a couple like neck options. I did the full turtleneck. Um, and there it is. So yeah, I mean, as soon as this is dry, I'll take photos of it and I will put it up 
on Instagram and stuff and share that with you all. Right, so that is the, yeah, that's the Woodwardia. Um, and I used Grenoe DK in her Wormwood colorway, which is just one of my very favorites. I asked her if she would dye it for me and she did and I love it. So um, just really, really happy with that. Um, and actually I think I, I took a picture before I blocked it just like of a, like a selfie so you can't see the whole thing, but maybe I can put that up here so you could see at least a little bit like what the neck and stuff looks like, but I am really happy with it. I knit the third size and my gauge was a little bit off. I don't remember which direction, but that ended up giving me the ease that I wanted. So, um, I'll have to see once it's blocked out, I'll like measure it and see like what the actual finished object dimensions are and like how much ease I end up having. But, um, I think it's going to end up being perfect, which is really nice for those of you who remember the last sweater that I attempted and knit the body of and turned out not fitting at all. So it was really nice to knit this one and just feel like, oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that, y'all. Something started playing on my computer. So, um, okay. What was I talking about? I'm really happy that the sweater fits. That I'm very happy about um, and was a nice relief after the turmoil I had with my previous one. So yeah, I'm really happy with the Woodwardia. I think it was a really quick knit and I think it's gonna be super cozy with the turtleneck. Like I'm really feeling turtlenecks this fall. I'm, I started, um, I'll talk about, again, I recast on that mock neck sweater. So I'm gonna do that one. And then I have another turtleneck planned, I think for this fall as well. So I don't know, this is just turtleneck season, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that's my only finished object. And then I have really, I mean, I've only made a little bit of progress on a couple of other things. Most of my knitting energy and time went into the Woodwardia. And like I said, I mean, we've been busy. We traveled last weekend, uh, work has been like really busy. We we're working on kind of like planning the rest of our um, kind of like travels and like visitors and stuff for the rest of this year. So it's been kind of a busy time, but I will share uh, small updates on some other projects. So this, oh my goodness. Well, I really love this and it's just, I wish I had more time. Here's the thing. Okay, well, first, sorry. <laughs> I need to slow down. <laughs> this is the Luminaria Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. I have been working on it for a couple weeks now. Um, more than that. I've been working on it for a while. It was a pattern that was released with Woolberry's Advent last year that Lindsay Fowler did for um, their Advent last year that I really loved. And I am using my 2020 Granite Wee Advent Plus also the main color is some leftovers from my soiree sweater. This is Viola Sock in the Silver Birch colorway. And then all the minis are from my Granoly Advent. So this is my progress. I've only added, I think like three rows maybe since you guys last saw it. Or I mean, not three rows, but three of the color sections, these like stripes almost. I've added three of them. Um, but I love this. This is giving me the most just like fall vibes. I want this to be done. Like I want to wear this. I feel like this would be cute with this kind of like corduroy jacket. I think the colors and just, I think it would be so cute. I don't really want to own it now, but I have to knit it first. So I'm kind of hoping, well, okay, here's the thing. This is what I was getting at before. I, because of the colors and just the way that the pattern is, I really only like to work on this in natural light. I don't like to work on this at night when I have like lamps and stuff on, but most of my knitting time is at night, like after I'm done working and stuff. And so I've only been putting rows on, in on this basically like weekend mornings. Um because I really like to see the colors when I'm knitting it. But I think I'm gonna have to just like let that go so that I can have the shawl sooner. 
Um, and then, you know, knit some rows even when it's not the best light. And then the next morning, look at them and be pleasantly surprised. Or not surprised, but just enjoy uh, the next morning. Cause like, I mean, I, it's not that I can't see it to knit it. It's just, I really, really like seeing the colors in natural light when I'm knitting it. And so I've been waiting for natural light to knit it. And it's, it's making this really slow progress, but it's so beautiful. I really, really want it. This is also one where like, it's pretty easy. I'll, wor I'll work on this when I watch TV, but I don't really want to work on this when I am talking to people. I I still have to like look at the, I mean, there are charts and stuff, so I have to look at the pattern a little bit. Um, so like when I've gone to knit night and stuff, I haven't worked on this. I've worked on other stuff. And I'm wondering if I should try to get over that as well, if that will like kind of push me to get more done. If I, if, I think I'm just limiting myself too much the like scenarios when I will knit on this but I love it I cannot wait to have it I think just looking at it I think I'm gonna change the edging the edging is kind of like a like a lacy edge on the bottom and I kind of want to just do an i-cord bind off on the bottom because that'll match the top has like this i-cord so I kind of want to just do i-cord all on the bottom as well um, but we'll see. When I get there, I have quite a ways before I get there. But yeah, this is the Luminaria by Lindsay Fowler. And I love it, but my progress is slow. And then that's what I was working on this morning. And then I have a couple other updates. One is my broken rib socks. Um, in the Grenoui, that gray color. This has got to be, I'm so sorry y'all, this has got to be like just the most boring project for y'all to see, like checkups on, and I've been working on it forever because I haven't been focusing on it. Um, but this is, yeah, just a, I cast on um, 64 stitches, and then I did like an inch of one by one rib, and then I switched to a broken rib. So I did one by one rib, one row, and then the next row I just knit the whole thing. The light is not great here. Sorry about that. Maybe you can see a little better there. Yeah, so it's like one by one at the top and then I go into like a broken rib. I think it'll block out like really nicely, but um, this is Grenoui Lamp Black, which is my very favorite gray. I really love this gray. And last time I think I was in the middle of the heel flap, so I took this project in the Woodwardia on our trip last weekend and we had quite a bit of time in the car like driving between places and so um, I finished Woodwardia and then I put some actual work into this uh, but I did turn the heel I've done the gusset I'm just on the foot now um, and this is a little bit of a shorter sock than I normally do I didn't think I had enough yarn to do like my full length sock and I also have been kind of wanting a sock like a pair of socks with a shorter leg just then it doesn't get as like bunched up above like in between my boots and pants or whatever I just wanted something that ended right around where my boots end so uh that's what this is and I'm really happy with it I wanted to talk to y'all about something though with the needles so I'm using Addy circular needles and I went down in needle size so I had I normally use uh US one and a halfs when I knit my socks and I have like three or four, my preferred way to do socks is the small circular. So I do like the eight or nine inch circular needles when I knit socks. And I've done Magic Loop before, I've done two at a time. I have not done DPNs because I just don't like DPNs. But this is definitely my preferred way to do it. I really love the small circulars. It doesn't bother my hands, everything's great. And the thing that a lot of people I think love about knitting socks, especially basic socks, is like you don't have to look at them a ton when you're knitting them, that you can like pay attention to other stuff and just go. And that was definitely the case with the previous needles that I used. So normally my my most of my little circular, tiny circular sock needles are chow goose, and I used the US one and a half. But I was getting socks that were like much bigger than I wanted to and I wanted a tighter gauge like I wanted them to be Yeah, I just wanted the fabric to be like denser 
So I decided to go down a needle size, so I bought a pair of Addies. These are Addies, and they're, uh, it's a US one, and they're like nine inch circulars. And um, it's just, I don't like it as much. And I don't know if it's the Addies or if it's the tighter gauge. Because I feel like I just can't cruise as much as I did before. I keep like slipping stitches weirdly or like not being able to get into the stitch cleanly. So I have to take a look at it. And I just don't feel comfortable. Like I used to feel comfortable. I would knit in the dark. Like if we were watching a movie or if I was in a car ride and it was dark outside, I would knit on a sock even if it was dark, even if I couldn't see, because I just like trusted my hands to do it. And I don't with these needles. And so that's really limiting me. Um, and I just feel slower too. I just think it's taking me longer. So um, I don't know. What I think I'm gonna do is just order a pair of chow goo size ones, and then I will be able to tell if it's the needle or if it's the gauge that's causing me this trouble. Um, but the thing is, this is the first sock and I don't really wanna switch, even if it's the same size, I don't really wanna to switch to a different needle for the second sock, because I just feel like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that would be weird? Like, do you think I would mess up my sock a ton if I used a different needle? Same size, but just like a different needle? I don't know. Maybe it's worth a try? We'll see. I may just finish this one with this needle, but it's taking me forever. Like, it's September right now, and this is my, I don't even know, third pair of socks this year? And last year I knit 12 pairs of socks. I know, I know I've been like prioritizing other stuff, but I don't know. Anyway, that is my other whip, my socks and maybe next time I'll have at least one finished sock for y'all to see. Not that it's like a super exciting project, but I don't know. Those are my sock thoughts. Um, okay, then I hinted at this a little bit, but I have cast back on the brioche pullover. So those of you who have been watching the podcast for the last couple episodes will remember that I started, okay, first of all, I had this like sweater that I saw online. It was like a Madewell sweater and it had these like really large, it was a brioche, it looked like brioche or like half brioche. It had a mock neck and then I had these large raglan kind of increases. And then it also had kind of like mirrored, ra uh, not raglan, just like brioche detailing at the bottom. And I really wanted this sweater, but I was like, man, do you guys ever feel like that too? Like I'm so unwilling to purchase knit like garments or knit anything. I won't buy it because I just like have in my head that I can make it. It's like, Emily, you don't need to buy that. Like you are the person who makes these things for yourself. Uh, so anyway, I was very unwilling to purchase the sweater and I was like, I can make that. I'm going to make it myself. So I got this yarn. It's, um, Derrerum Natura Ulissi in the Pauvre Blanc colorway. I probably butchered all of that, but this is really nice, palish, like, um, creamy gray that I really love. I've been like really into this color and, uh, just neutrals in general. Anyway, I started it, I, I found a pattern, uh, the pattern is called Birthday by Ankastrick, also probably pronouncing that wrong, and uh, it looked like generally what I wanted, it actually uses this yarn, so I was like, perfect, that would be great, and I was just going to modify it so that I changed the neckline, and then um, basically use most of the rest of the pattern. I hadn't decided yet whether I was going to add those details at the bottom that my, uh, the Madewell sweater had or not. Anyway, I did that. I gauge swatched. I didn't pay attention to my gauge swatch. I just like picked a size without thinking and I knit the body of a sweater and it was massive for me. It was way, way too big for me. So I pulled it all out. 
and I set it aside and I knit the LaGuardia and then I decided to come back. So I'm coming back now. Um, okay, a couple of things. The pattern, yes, uses this yarn, but also uses a size three needle, a US size three needle. All my interchangeable sets go down to a four. I have some size three needles, but I don't have like all the circular sizes for size three needles. And so it's just much, I mean, this is so silly of me to be like, I'm making this whole decision based on the needles that I have already. Like I can buy more needles, but I just really like to do my interchangeables, especially for sleeves, because I have a small interchangeable set and I hate magic loop for sleeves. I just really don't want to do it. So. I decided I was going to gauge swatch on a four instead of a three, and that's what I did, and I love the fabric. I really like the fabric. I really like that it's in my interchangeable set, so I decided I'm going to go with this. So normally what I would do, and I mentioned this earlier with the Woodwardia, very common for me is if I gauge swatch and I measure my gauge and my gauge is off in one direction or the other, I'll do the math to figure out if I can knit a different size and get the intended circumference of the project so I don't know if this makes any sense to y'all um, but basically like if I'm in between sizes or something and my gauge is like a little bit off in one direction that will like nudge me to do one size or the other because my gauge can like pull the sweater like in or out a little bit to get it to be what I want I don't know if that makes sense um, you know I can go through like how I do all the math. I think other folks have probably done this before as well, but you can basically just take your gauge and figure out how many stitches you want in your the body of the sweater to have the circumference be this like circumference that you want to fit your body. And then you can compare this body stitch counts to all the sizes for the pattern and see like which one's the closest to what you want. So that's what I normally do. Unfortunately for this one, I really like this fabric. I use a size four. My gauge is so off that there isn't a size that will give me the intended circumference that I want. So before I knit size three, and that's the size, or like it's called like M1, I think, like medium one. That's the size that I would normally knit if I just like had gauge, that would give me the ease that I wanted. But, with this gauge, even the smallest size will be too big. If I knit the smallest size at this gauge, it would still be bigger than I wanted. So I'm actually gonna adjust the numbers myself um, and just like do the raglan and then not like stop increasing when I get to a point where I have the number of body stitches that I want for this sweater, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of like going rogue. I'm not following any of the sizes for this pattern. I'm just gonna do the raglan. I'm modifying the neckline again. So I have started it, that all this is to say, I cast on, I started the sweater again. I'm doing my modified neckline again. So this is like the mock neck. And then I'll probably start doing the raglan soon. And then I'm just gonna keep increasing until I get to the number of stitches where I'm happy with the number of stitches I have for each of the sleeves and I'm happy with the number of stitches I have for the body and then I'm just gonna finish the body and finish the sleeves. Um, yeah. So maybe that's a bad idea, I don't know. But I think, I'm, I don't know, I'm like, I talked about this in one of my last episodes. I've gotten to the point now where I'm confident enough in my knitting that I trust myself to make a modification like this. Like, yeah, it goes wrong sometimes. Like sometimes I mess up like I did before and like you end up with a sweater that's way too big, but I just think it's way more likely that I'm gonna get exactly what I want if I trust myself to make the modifications that will make me happy. And like maybe I could find another pattern that would fit better, but at this point, I know what I want and I think I can make it happen. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, I will keep y'all updated on how it goes. Hopefully um, by the next time I record, I will have made some progress on the raglan increases. And I really am hoping to have this sweater 
in the next like month or so because we're going on a trip in October. We're going on like a fall trip. And I just have these ideas of my like fall attire. And so I'm hopeful. Sorry for all the noises. <laughs> Y'all, I did not do a good, I, I started recording a little bit on a whim this morning and I did not do a great job of turning everything off. So anyway, um, yes, I have these ideas for my like fall knitwear and like, you know, being in, going to pumpkin patches and like being in the trees with the leaves changing and like apple picking and all of that kind of, and I just have these ideas in my head of like my fall knitwear and my fall attire. So I'm really hopeful that I can get it done and have the attire that I'm looking for. So anyway, that's the last thing that I've been working on. This again is, I think I told you about the yarn. I, uh, I'm knitting on a US4. I'm doing a size that is kind of the smallest size, but a little bit smaller than the smallest size because my gauge is off. And yeah, that's it. Um, so that's really all of my knitting this week. I have not updated my Mariner's cowl. Um, I am just very behind on that, unfortunately and I will try to get caught up soon uh, because it has actually been kind of fun. So the Mariners are in kind of a playoff race. They're a little bit behind and have been for a while. So I think it'll be a little tough for them to pull it off, but uh, I'm still hopeful and we've been watching and, and you know, it's still possible. So um, yeah, the Mariners are, uh, I think, two or three games um, back of the second wild card spot. So we'll see how that goes. And then the Cardinals also are actually in a wild card position right now as well, um, ahead of the Reds and the Padres. And I haven't been watching the Cardinals as much. I feel like I kind of thought that they were not gonna make it. And so I kind of stopped watching, um, but I think they're in a good spot right now. So who knows, maybe they'll make it. Um, yeah, oh, also I have no acquisitions this week. It feels like it's the first time in forever that I don't have any acquisitions to share with you. I have not bought any yarn. I really want to buy some Pearl Soho Linen Quill. I can't stop thinking about it, but there's one color that I really want and they're sold out of that color. And I keep checking literally every day to see if they have it back and they don't. Um, so I'll keep checking and once they have it back, I will probably buy that. But uh, yeah. Okay, so maybe with uh, the trip stuff, this will be a little bit of a normal length or longer episode. It won't be as quick as I was thinking, but if you're interested in hearing about what we've been up to, um, please feel free to stay tuned and I will chat about it a little bit. So uh, if you're interested in seeing like all the photos and kind of me walking through how our trip was and, and everything, um, definitely go check out my Instagram. I save. I went through and like posted on stories a whole bunch of photos um, and just like annotated kind of what we were up to. And so I think I saved, yeah, I saved all of those in a highlight. So you should be able to go and check that out if you want to. Um, oh, also, one thing I want to mention before I get into like trip stuff is we have a knit along going on right now. Um, we are doing the Stripey Turtles Hank knit along. The Stripey Turtle K-A-L is the hashtag. And I'm wearing my Stripey Turtle Tank, my original Stripey Turtle Tank today. And I love it. Even in fall, like layered with this, I feel like it's so cozy and nice, just the high neck. And I don't know, I really like it for fall. So if you also are interested in having one for fall, please feel free to join our knit along. We've had not a ton of activity there. I think folks are still waiting. I know some folks are still waiting to get their yarn from Melanie, but I have started to see people um, receiving their yarn from her. So hopefully soon. I also ordered a set from her. So um, I can't wait to get mine as well. But yeah, if you are interested, feel free to join. You can use the hashtag Stripey Turtle K-A-L on Instagram. And uh, yeah, feel free, like post in your stories, post uh, on the grid is how you'll have to post to get uh, submitted for prizes, but also just to engage with other folks, like please feel free. Um, I think next Friday, I'll probably start doing roundups of photos, just sharing um, posts with the hashtag. Um, but yeah, even if you're just kind of picking out your yarn 
or you've just started and want to share with the group, uh, please do. I love to see color combinations. I love to see what people are working on. Um, and then I'm planning on casting on another one pretty soon as well. So we are in the second or so week of the knit along, second or third week. And it's going to go through the rest of September and also all the way through October. So you have plenty of time if you're interested. Uh, I love wearing mine like as a vest or layered or whatever for the fall, the cooler months, but also just like getting your knits ready for next spring, I think is also a great idea. So yeah, stripey turtle knit along, I forgot about and I'm glad that I remembered. Uh, okay, trip stuff. So last weekend we went to North Cascades National Park. We took a long weekend, we took Friday off and went Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so we live in the Seattle area. North Cascades National Park is a little bit north and east of us. Um, and it was only about a, two and a half, maybe three hour drive from where we live to the park. We stayed a little bit outside in Marble Mount. We stayed in this like cute little cat, this little cabin that was really cute. Um, and then, yeah, we did three days there, the first and the third day. So Friday and Sunday, we spent hiking in the park. Uh, so we were like on trails and stuff in the park and also like going to viewpoints and lookouts and stuff. And then the middle day, we try not to do like intense hiking uh, in back-to-back -back days. So we try to break it up with one day in the middle. So we went to Chelan, which is also kind of in that area. It was a little bit of a drive for us to get there, but it's like this really, there's a lake there. It's a town like right by Lake Chelan. And uh, so we spent some time on the lake kayaking. We also, they have a ton of orchards in that area. And we went apple picking and apple cider tasting. And it was just a lovely day to kind of like break up the hiking days. But yeah, if you are interested in more info, definitely check out my Instagram or like reach out, message me if you have questions about what, anything we did. Uh, but the first day we did a hike at Maple Pass. And that is where I met Hoki Locatelli. So um, I imagine if you're watching this podcast that you probably know who she is. But if not, she is one of the most incredible knitwear designers. She's just amazing. I've knit uh, her patterns. And um, she has tons of beautiful patterns, shawl, sweater patterns, some of her most popular. You may be familiar with her boxy. She's done like a couple versions of it. It's like a really nice boxy um, sweater. So that's one. Um, I knit the, her shawl last year for her like fall knit along, which is about to start, I think now, if you guys are interested in joining. But I knit her Girl from the Grocery Store shawl, which I love and I actually wore last week. Um, and I know uh, she's got tons of other really popular patterns. My knitting friends have knit some of her patterns as well. Um, and so, yeah, I, we were about to start our hike. We were looking at the trail map, like right before the trailhead. And I was with Malfus, my husband, and I s look over and I see Hoagie and I like, couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. I mean, I'd seen like on her Instagram and our stories and stuff that she was going to be in Washington, but I mean, what are the chances that we like run into each other anyway? So I'm like, Malfus, like, Hey, I, I think that's Hoagie Locatelli. And just to give you an indicator of like how you know, <laughs> big Hoagie Locatelli is. Malthus knew who I was talking about before I even told him, like, who she is. Like, he's heard this name. He knew who she was. Um, so I was like, Malthus, like, I think that's Hoagie Locatelli. And Malthus is like, what? Like, why are you freaking out so much? Like, that's just another human. Like, <laughs> go talk to her. Um, and so they had already, like, started their hike. And I was like, okay, what do I do? Like, do I, do I, like, hike really quickly so that I can catch up to her or like what how does this work and so I was like really nervous like I'm, am I gonna talk to her like is it I didn't want her to be like weirded out or like freaked out that I knew who she was and I was just like hiking behind her anyway um they she was there with her family and they stopped for water and we continued and caught up to them and like I was almost all the way past them and I was like no Emily like you need to do it go for it so I turned and I was like, hi, are you Hoagie Locatelli? Like, I, I'm a huge knitter. I've knit several of your patterns. Like, uh, and, and she was like, yes, it's me. I can't believe that you recognize me. And like, she was talking to her husband, like her family, and they couldn't believe it. And she asked if she, like, if we wanted to take a picture. And so we took a picture together, which I'll include here. 
Um, and she was just so nice and we chatted for a little bit and she told us to enjoy our hike. And then, I mean, it was a long hike. It was like an eight mile hike. And we just kind of like went back and forth. We saw them a whole bunch of times at different stops and, you know, always chatted and were friendly. And she was just really, she and her family were all just very kind. And, um, we actually ended up going to dinner at the same place as well. And I saw her winding yarn, um, at the table while they were waiting for their food, which was just really fun. Um, but yeah, she was so nice and that was a really cool experience. And the rest of the trip was just in general, wonderful as well. The, the North Cascades, it honestly, especially that first hike we did at Maple Pass was probably the most like beautiful, breathtaking hike I've ever done in my life. Certainly the most beautiful in the state of Washington. Just unreal. I mean, it was gorgeous. Uh, really, really beautiful though. And I, I really love a lake hike. I just really like views with a lake. That's just something I'm quite partial to. And the lakes in this park were so beautiful. The water was gorgeous. I mean, it was, especially there's this one lake called Diablo Lake that we hiked around as well on Sunday. And the water is so beautiful. It's this like turquoisey color and just breathtaking. So we had the most amazing time. It was really great to kind of disconnect and just have a great weekend. And then we came back and like went to some baseball games this week. Um, I will say some baking I did. So I'd never made, I'd made bagels before, but I had never made soft pretzels before. And if you haven't, you should, they're like very easy and they taste very good. But we normally are often, I think soft pretzels are made with beer, but we had gotten some hard cider when we went to Chelan. And so I made hard cider soft pretzels. Um, I can try to include the recipe below. It was a half-baked half harvest recipe, and they turned out so good, really good. The recipe calls for, or also includes, uh, like, a recipe for a kind of spicy honey mustard, which I didn't make because I don't love spicy sauces, um, but we ate it with some Dijon mustard, and that was really good, but I also took it and dipped it in cinnamon sugar, and that was really, really good, um, really tasty. So yes, huge fan of that. What other, have I done any other baking? We got a whole bunch of apples. So we're planning, I think maybe this weekend, we're gonna make applesauce and apple pie. And that will be yummy. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. We're going back to, yeah, so I think those of you who have watched for a while will remember that my husband, Nopis, really loves pumpkin pie spice and just like pumpkin things in general, like pumpkin foods. And so his favorite that we make for, like his favorite breakfast food that we make for Sunday breakfast is pumpkin pancakes. And I told him that we can't make pumpkin pancakes year round. It's like a seasonal food. You have to wait until fall. And he has waited patiently and we decided that this weekend was probably fall enough that we can make pumpkin pancakes. So I think we're going to make pumpkin pancakes tomorrow. So that'll be good. And yeah, I don't think there's a ton of other baking stuff. The only other thing, um, yeah, we have this weekend, I'm going to an embroidery class shortly with a friend, and I think that will be really fun. I'm going to learn how to embroider a little bee on a t-shirt. So hopefully that'll be fun. I don't know. I think so. And then I'm also going to a concert with a friend tonight, uh, which I'm really excited about. I think that'll be fun as well. And then we've been doing knit nights with my knitting group more regularly. Um, we did one on Thursday and then I think we may also get together this Sunday, which is really fun and always just like really helps my knitting mojo to knit with friends. I just love that. And yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it. Lots of work. Um, and yeah, the seasons are changing here. Uh, I did move around some of my plants. Maybe I should try to 
move the camera over so you all can see. It's by the window, so you may not be able to see it super well. But I moved some of my plants around. Here, let's see. So that I put some hanging plants up there and I kind of moved some of them around. I also got this beautiful Monstera, these Monstera cuttings. I don't know if you can see right here um, from my friend. So I'm really excited about those. I got a nice big pot for them. But yeah, my plants are doing pretty well right now. They're happy, I would say. And I think that's all I wanted to talk about. I think that's everything. So thank you so much for listening and hanging out for a while. I think this ended up being longer than I expected, but, um, but I'm happy to catch up with everyone. So yeah, I hope you all have a great week. Um, oh, I did that in the wrong, see, I'm out of, I'm out of practice. I did it in the wrong order. I hope you do lots of knitting and I hope you watch lots of baseball and I hope you have a great week. Bye.